Hello everyone, today we're going to be covering how I created this neat little YouTube studio app that can sit right on your desktop. Now this isn't really going to be applicable for most people because most people probably aren't uploading videos and don't really care about their studio dashboard. But in my case, I use this pretty much every other day, so I was getting kind of tired of having to switch between accounts to upload and stuff like that. So I created this little app that I can just click on whenever I need to upload or respond to comments. So we're just gonna cover how I did this real quick. It's actually a very, very fast process. Uh, the only thing you'll need is Node installed on your system and uh, we'll just go ahead and we'll get started. So the basic way that this works is we're gonna be using NPX create electron app and then we'll just call it whatever we want. We'll just say this is like, uh, I don't know, I'll call it studio maybe, just so it doesn't conflict with anything else in this folder. This will then go ahead and create an Electron app. Now, if you're not familiar with Electron, it's the same type of tool that's used for apps like Discord. Basically, you can wrap a website inside of a desktop window and it'll work just like it normally would. It's just inside of this weird little browser shell or like a, a Chromium shell instead. Now, while this is going on, we're gonna go over to, to YouTube or to Google and we're going to search for the YouTube studio icon. We're just going to find one that looks roughly similar to what we're looking for. I'm going to grab this one. Uh, I'm just going to right click save as I'll save it as whatever. Uh, in this case, I already have it saved right here as unnamed WebP, So we can just go ahead and save that. We'll replace it. We then go over to Google again and we search for WebP to ICO converter. And then we just pick whichever works. We upload it. We start it, we finish it, and then we'll get a .ico file. That is the icon that's going to be used in our taskbar as well as for the executable itself. So we can then go ahead and clear this terminal. We'll cd into our studio app and then we'll do a code dot to open this up in VS Code. Now that that's done, we can come over into our SRC folder and we can check out our index.js file. This is sort of where all of the Electron stuff happens. We've covered this before. Basically, we have the create window call right here and a whole bunch of stuff that we're not really gonna touch right here. So we can ignore pretty much everything outside of the create window. This is just the thing that's going to create the actual app. And if we come into our package.json, we can see in here that there is a npm run start command. So if we just try that, npm run start, this should open up a basic app for us which will, uh, it'll just be running in developer mode. And we can see here, this is what a empty Electron app looks like. It's just a regular old web page looking thing, but it's as a desktop application with uh, the option to like open up your dev tools if you'd like. You can also disable that functionality. But I'd like this to instead open up the YouTube Studio website. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Now, if you're not familiar, oops, I'm trying to use Linux commands. If you're not familiar, uh, the YouTube Studio website is located at studio.youtube.com. So we'll just copy that URL, come into our index.js. And in here, we just want to do a couple things. We have this preload, which is just going to open up this preload.js file, which doesn't have anything in it. And that's totally fine. Now what we'll do is for this preload, uh, we're not really using it. We can comment it out if we'd like to, it doesn't really matter. And then we can go ahead and move on we'll have to comment out this load file, which is what's actually loading the index.html file, which had that hello world inside of it. We don't need that. So we can actually just comment that out. And uh, we don't need to open up the dev tools by default, so we can also comment that out. Instead, what we wanna do is we want to do a main window dot load URL, and then we'll just pass in HTTPS colon slash slash, I'll like control B to hide the side panel, uh, studio.youtube.com. And then by doing this, we should now be able to run npm run start, and this should in theory open up the YouTube studio page instead of that uh, basic HTML page. So it takes us to the Google sign in, and then of course you can sign in here and you're gonna be on the studio dashboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip that for now because I don't really need to do it and then I'll, uh, I'll move on from here. So this is great. This gives us the ability to package a uh, website basically in one line. It'll be as a desktop app, and then you're pretty much good to go from there. But uh, as you've probably noticed before, uh, you do run into some issues when you try to package uh, websites like this. Uh, basically, you won't have any icons for like your, your taskbar. 
And to get those working, it's actually not terribly difficult. There is a forge config located right here. And inside of the forge config, all we really need to do is inside this packer config, we need to pass in a location for an icon, which in this case we can put inside of our SRC folder. Uh, so we'll come into SRC, right click, and we'll say new folder. We'll call it assets. Inside of our assets folder is where we'll want to um, upload that, or I guess copy and paste that image we just downloaded, which is this one right here, this ICO. So we'll grab the ICO, we'll drag it into the assets. We'll rename this to something like YouTube-Studio. Just save that. We can then go over to our Forge icon. We can go into dot slash SRC slash assets slash YouTube-Studio. We don't need the dot ICO at the end of it. That is, I guess, implicitly picked up by uh, Electron Forge. So that's pretty cool. And then once this is done, we should then be good to try publishing it. So we can come over to our package.json. There is a publish command right here. So we can run npm run publish. And then that should start publishing this app. Now, while this is going on, I wanna go over to GitHub and I want to actually create a place where we can create a, a release for this. So if I come over to my repositories, I should hopefully still have it at the top. It's right here. I'm gonna go ahead and full screen this real quick. Uh, you can see here, this is the repo I made for this YouTube Studio app, just so I could download it on another computer. And over here, I have listed a release, which has the zip file as well as the uh, source files. Now, I've had some people ask how to do this before, so I thought this would be a great tutorial to cover how to do a GitHub uh, release. And it's actually not terribly difficult. So if we come over here, we'll create a new repo. I'll just call this, I don't know, like um, YouTube Studio Video, something like that. Give it a description if you'd like to. Uh, this is for a video that covers, um, I don't know, creating a YouTube studio desktop app. You can mark it as public. You can leave the rest of this blank, click re uh, create repository. I'll come down here uh, because we now do have this package and I'll do a CLS and we can go ahead and we can open that up real quick. I am going in, oops, uh, I'm actually gonna do this. So one thing you can do if you're inside of a PowerShell like I am here, you can do a explorer.exe and then the, the period and that'll open up uh, Windows Explorer to this exact location. So I'll go ahead and scroll in a bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. Inside of here, we have two folders. One is the out and one is the uh, SRC. And we don't need the SRC, but we can come into the out we don't need to go into the make folder because that's just gonna be some specific build stuff. But if we come into the studio-win32-x64, you can see in here we have the studio.exe uh, application. If we double click this, which it does have that, that cool little icon. So let me just scroll in a bit so you can see it. It does have that studio icon there. If we double click it, you can now see we have the studio icon in our uh, taskbar down here as well as up here in the top. And now we're pretty much good to go. We could sign in from this point. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, and we can see here that we're now signed into this app. So that's pretty cool. This is all working. We can of course come down to our analytics or come down to, I don't know, the copyright section or whatever. And all of this is working just like you would expect it to in a regular studio app on like a website or whatever. It's just inside of a desktop app. So now that we have that done, let's go ahead and let's create this release. Now, because this is on the Windows side of things, I don't have an, H, uh, an SSH key enabled, so I'm gonna be using the HTTPS version for this Git. And I'll come down here to the uh, existing repo and just copy this. Now down here, I'll do a Git status. You can see we have a couple of files here with a Git ignore already, so we're good to go. We can do a Git add dot. Now that we're done with this, what we can do is we can do a Git commit dash M for the init commit. And then we can go ahead and copy this section right here to push from an existing repo. We'll paste it in by right clicking, hit enter to push to uh, origin main, come up here and refresh. And now we have our uh, project on our repo. To create the release, we just come up here, do a create a new release. Let me make sure I'm zoomed in enough so you can actually see this. In here, we'll give this a release title, uh, version 1.0.0 official release, right? We can choose a tag, we can create a new tag. So we'll say V1.0.0, we'll create the tag. Our target will be the main branch. You come down here and say this is a description of this release. 
You can then generate release notes by clicking this button. It'll grab your change log based on your commit history. Now, in this case, there were no pull requests associated with the commit, so there's really no commit history to work with. And then the last thing you wanna do is attach some binaries by dropping them here. Now, in this case, what you can do is you can come into your out and your studio 32. You can grab all of this, right click on your studio.exe, click the compress to zip file. This will then send everything to a zip file called studio.zip. Uh, because it takes the name of whatever you right clicked on you like you can obviously rename the file But it's just a way to save like two seconds of your time You can then grab this and drag it onto the attach binary section and that should go ahead and release it Okay, so now our zip file is uploaded. We can do a publish release and now you can see here. We have the uh, Release page. Yeah, hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next video